So, Mr. Turner, we are here in uh, Budapest, in the headquarters of the Munkas Part, the party of the Hungarian workers. Even if it's forbidden by the law, we can somehow consider it the kind of communist party. And um, first of all, would you be so kind to present yourself? Um, and what, what can be interesting to know about your life? <laughs> Thank you for your coming. Welcome in the Hungarian Workers' Party. You are right, the word communist is prohibited in Hungary. The actual Hungarian government has some strange traditions. They think that we are living in the 1930s of the 20th century. I think that uh, everybody should understand that now we are living here in the 21st century and there are new traditions, new customs, and, and new laws. Uh, I was born in the 20th uh, century, in 1953. I was educated here in Budapest. I like Hungary and Budapest very much. Later I studied in Moscow. At that time all the, the leading diplomats of the Hungarian Diplomatic Service got their education in the State University of the Soviet Union. Uh, I worked in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in different embassies. Our task with my colleagues was to defend the national interests of Hungary. And as you know, 26 years ago, everything has changed here in Hungary. We passed from socialism to a different type of society. Naturally, our life has changed. And 26 years ago, uh, we decided with some of our followers and comrades and friends to establish a new party. And it is the actual Hungarian Workers' Party. I have been the president of this party since from the very beginning. It's practically 20 years, 26 years already. And at this time of the regime change, uh, you were against the change of regime, or what was your position when uh, the socialism uh, collapsed step by step in Hungary at the end of the 80s? You know, if we speak about uh, the different social systems, we can make a consideration of ideological type. But at the same time, you can use the way of thinking of common people. The common Hungarian people don't speak about capitalism, socialism, perhaps they even use this word. They just compare which society, which construction of the society can give to me more. Socialism or capitalism, it's not important what is the name of this system. And uh, naturally, older people are under influence of the official propaganda, newspapers, media, they look television, they got their education in the schools, and they have some impressions of the official propaganda. But if you go on the streets now and ask the Hungarian people, uh, when did you live better? Uh, there are a lot of people who would answer to you that, no, our fathers or grandfathers lived better in the 1970s, 80s, than we do live now in Hungary. In our party there are a lot of uh, uh, friends and members of our party in their 40s. They are 40, 45 years old. And they say that we know that uh, our fathers lived better than now we do live in, in the contemporary Hungary. But what is worse, we now understand that we will never live as well as our fathers did. And this is the real, real problem. You know, there are things which you cannot compare, because uh, socialism was a system which uh, put in the center of the, of the attention of the society the human being itself. We think that capitalism puts in the center of the opinion and the attention money. And uh, money is good and market is good, but money and market cannot solve all the, all the problems. And now we understand that uh, Hungary has got a lot during the socialist time by giving the people uh, free of, 
of payment education, a free of payment uh, healthcare system, and the possibility to work for everybody. This is an aim which the European Union cannot solve until now. Mm -hmm. So you, you generally you have a better opinion on the regime of Janusz Kada, who was the ruling person of the Communist Party of Hungary during the, from '56 until the almost the end of socialism. Do you think it was a better time for people from economical point of view or for public liberties? What is your vision about this period? Of You know, uh, if you take some particular elements of a social system, including the system of Janusz Kara, you can say that, no, it was bad. But if you take the general result and the general accomplishment of the system, I think uh, we should change our opinion. The Hungary of the socialist period has uh, uh, built up a national industry. Now in Hungary we don't have a national industry. We have Mercedes, we have Audi, we have foreign companies, but I think that they are not uh, parts of the Hungarian uh, national economy. In the socialist time everybody had the possibility to work. It means that the, the society could use the human resources and the society could use the possibilities of everybody. Now we couldn't use and we cannot use the, uh, the human resources of the society fully. And, uh, and a lot of people, uh, that's why, are living under conditions when they say that, uh, why should I live? Because I don't have a real aim of, of my life. Uh, I think that uh, there were a lot of mistakes in the socialist uh, system, including the lack of of democracy. Although, you know, uh, I remember my, my youth. Yes, we, we couldn't go on the streets and we couldn't cry that we are against Janusz Kadar and, and uh, that we don't want socialism. Now you can go on the streets and you can cry and you can demand uh, the change of system and, and, and nothing happens. Nothing happens. I think that uh, the right to work, the right to a uh, a good healthcare system, the right of everybody to, to learn at any schools in accordance with the education and not in accordance with the money which the parents have, give much more than, than the so-called uh, democracy of our days. Mm -hmm. what, what is your vision about those um, former Um, officials of the Communist Party who turned into a very hard liberalism uh, from economical and even society point of view um, just after the change of regime. What's your vision about those people? You know, uh, the history of the Hungarian socialism is a very interesting one and sometimes these elements are forgotten in the Western countries. Uh, the Hungarian socialism um, was uh, a, a difficult and very complicated system. And the leadership, uh, among the leaders of the former Hungarian Socialist Workers' Party headed by Janusz Kada, you could find communists, you could find social democrats, you can find liberals, you can find also some conservatives. Uh, You know that by the end of the socialist time, this large party was liquidated and all these people ran to different parties. That's why you could find former representatives of the Communist Party among the Social Democratic Party of Hungary, among the liberal parties and, and so on. And by the end of the socialist time, there were a lot of uh, leading personalities who, who wanted Uh, who were not satisfied with that uh, standard of living which Hungary had that time. You know that uh, we lived, uh, we had a, a good standard of living. It wasn't so high than in the Western countries, in France or Germany. But as Janusz Kada used to say, uh, our uh, standard of living was acceptable 
not so high as in the Western countries, but we, we, we didn't have to work as much as the workers in the Western countries had to work for the standard of living. But these people who became later uh, liberal and social democratic uh, representatives wanted uh, more. And they said that uh, we should change the socialist system in order to get more and to get real uh, rich people, even millionaires or billionaires. And unfortunately, these people uh, had a decisive uh, word and uh, much possibilities by the end of the socialist time. And they have given up their conviction, if they had, I don't know if they but they had some conviction and went over very quickly to the liberal, uh, first of all, to the liberal uh, directions. And uh, those who were against capitalist systems uh, some decades ago now are the, the strongest defenders of capitalist system itself. And so you, do you think that as in... Um the other former communist countries of Central Europe, the, the economical system, the factories, the industry has been destroyed. What, what's your view on this, uh, on the way it has been privatized uh, after the uh, You know, uh, I think that uh, it would have been better to reform the socialist society because it had a lot of positive elements. Uh, I think that it would have been better to liquidate the mistakes of the socialist system, to reform the socialist itself. I think that this uh, uh, social democrat and liberal politicians had another opinion. They wanted to give up socialism, to come out from socialism and to introduce a fully classical uh, capitalist system. And it was a mistake. It was good for them. Uh, like persons, because they could get rich, but it was bad for the society and for the Hungarian people. Because uh, uh, it was an illusion that Hungary will have the same possibilities as capitalist countries like Austria, or Germany, or other, other countries. Hungary became a colony uh, of, the European, uh, of the European Union. And now we, uh, we are living under these uh, conditions until now. The Western countries used our market, used our possibilities of human resources, scientific resources, and so on. I think that it was a, a way which makes, which means a real mistake, a mistake from a historical point of view. What kind of possibilities um, do you see in the future in order to free Hungary from this, what you mentioned as a uh, colonial system from the economical point of view. Well, what, what should be the steps in order to get back some freedom for Hungarian people and economy? You know, I think that we should follow our own way. Hungary is a country with 10 million population. It's not a big country. Uh, we should use what we really have. We have our people, we have our land. And we should use for the future, for the future development of Hungary, the human resources of our country. And I think that uh, all wise and clever countries use these two, two factors. It means, in my opinion, that we should invest more into the healthcare system and into education. When we will have a lot of well-educated and uh, very trained and, and healthy young people, uh, we can compete with all other nations of the European Union. I think that now the government uh, is taking some steps to these directions. But at the same time, I think that now the official political line of the Hungarian government to invite foreign investments to Hungary and to use these foreign investments for the future development of the country. During this time, and actually it is a good decision, but uh, the foreign companies can come to Hungary very quickly, but they can also leave Hungary very quickly. We, I think it's a mistake to build and to base uh, the future of Hungary only 
under invitation of foreign companies. We should use the help naturally and we should invite them, but at the same time we should put much more money to the education and to the healthcare system. Our opinion is that we should invest at least 10% of the GDP, both in the education and the healthcare system. Now Hungary spends about 5-6% on, uh, of the GDP on healthcare system and, and you can see that the conditions of the Hungarian hospitals are very bad and, uh, and uh, uh, expected uh, years of life of the Hungarian people is much, slow, much uh, lower than in the European Union. We should change it. Let's switch to international topics. Um, the first question I would like to ask you is um, your basic uh, vision about the Russia of uh, Putin president. You know, uh, I think that uh, the European countries, including Hungary, uh, do not really understand sometimes uh, what Russia means. Russia is not only a country. Russia is an is a international phenomenon. Russia is a continent. Russia is an other tradition, an other culture, if you want to say. I wouldn't say another civilization, but, but it's an other type of, of, uh, of, of, of life. And we shouldn't forget it. I think that uh, the Hungarian history learns us that if you want to fight against the Russians, we always lose this fight. We should find some ways to cooperate or to co-live, to coexistence with Russia and, 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 and with this uh, with people. And Europe will survive, I think, only in that case if we, if we want to cooperate in some way with Russia. Uh, perhaps uh, there are systems, political regimes we, we don't like in, in Russia. And I can understand that many Europeans didn't like Stalin or didn't like Gorbachev or the Emperor like Gorbachev. And uh, I can imagine that a lot of people don't like the actual Putin uh, systems. Good. But uh, Putin is, is a president who who defends the interests of, of Russia and, uh, and, and the Russian, Russian capital. Uh, he does the same as, as all the Western European leaders or the leaders of the United States do. They also defend their interests and I think that the actual government of Russia defends the national interests. I think it's a mistake when uh, we want a Russia with a subordinated government like uh, Yeltsin used to be. Uh, it, uh, it can be useful for some times, but uh, from a historical point of view, it's a, it's, it's a mistake. I think that Europe can live in this uh, global world only in a close cooperation with a strong Russia. It's the only way to, to survive the competition with the United States of America and China, on the other hand. What's your view on the crisis in Ukraine? You know, uh, I think that there can be different opinions and different approaches to this uh, question. Now, first of all, and this is the most actual thing, we are afraid that we are very near to a European war. Uh, I see that in Hungary there are more and more American soldiers, more and more bases of different types. Uh, the Polish governments would like to deploy more American soldiers on the territory. There are a lot of maneuvers and generally the NATO is nearing to the Russian border. It automatically will lead to a situation that the Russians will do the same. And if they are too close to each other, nobody knows and, uh, when the moment comes when a real war happens in Europe. We don't want a war in Europe and that's why we call to all powers, to all states, to make all possible steps which depend on us to avoid a war and to prevent uh, such a development of the situation. The second moment, uh, uh, you know that uh, the European Union is in a, in a difficult situation. I would say the European Union is in crisis. 
that 26 years ago when the socialist system was collapsed here in Eastern Europe, I think that the Western European countries uh, had a, a very similar situation. At that time there was also a crisis in, in Western Europe. But the European Union of that time could solve the crisis by enlarging the European Union. And they put the Hungarian market, the Polish market, the Romanian market to the general uh, Western European market. Now we are facing a new crisis and the European Union is trying to find some new additional markets. And Ukraine is a possibility. And that's why a real economic and political war is going on for, for Ukraine. I think that we should find some other, other, other ways. If we will go on war with Russia because of Ukraine, it will have a very negative influence of, of all the, of the countries. And the third moment, I think that, you know, when, if you look at Europe from the United States of America, from America, all things uh, seems to be uh, easier. Uh, I think that it would be better not to listen to the Americans and not to, not to allow that the Americans decide our uh, political line. But the Americans uh, can, perhaps they want a war with Russia, but it's not the interest of the, of the European, European countries. And one uh, more moment, you know, I don't uh, accept when we use use uh, a double uh, system of, of estimation of political things. Here in, in Europe, in the European Union, if uh, you cannot publish a newspaper or if you cannot go on the streets and to demand some political changes, you will say that it's an anti-democratic country, dictatorship and so on. Uh, all the Western European countries criticized Lukashenko, the Belarus president, because he was said to be the last European dictatorship. I think that Poroshenko is not Lukashenko. Poroshenko is Hitler. What now is going on in Ukraine is a typical fascist nationalist system. In a country where a party can be prohibited, like the Communist Party of Ukraine was prohibited, a party which two years ago had 18% of the elections. And the only way to exclude this party from the political competition is to, to ban it. It's, it's an absolutely unacceptable thing. And uh, I don't know whether you had some protests from Chancellor Merkel or President Hollande or from other leaders of the European Union. No, unfortunately, no. I would like to, to know what the opinion on this um, absolutely new uh, migration crisis and um, your opinion as well on um, the politics of Mr. Viktor Orban, who decided to build those fences at the borders of, between Hungary and Serbia and then Hungary and Croatia. You know, uh, the Hungarian Workers' Party, my party, is against the so-called welcome the migrants policy. We think that uh, it's uh, not an acceptable political line. If you invite a migrant to your home or to my home, it can be an act of a very nice solidarity. It's acceptable. If a government invites migrants to the country, I think it's a great political mistake. If the whole European Union is going to invite millions of migrants to Europe, it will be a tragedy. A European tragedy, a tragedy for all uh, European people and the European civilization. Uh, we are an uh, anti-capitalist party, naturally, and uh, we think that um, the whole problem of the migration is caused by the capitalist system itself. It was the European Union, the United States, to destroy the stable regimes of, of uh, Africa and the Middle East. Uh, they changed and even killed uh, Gaddafi, they changed the system in, in, in Egypt, they want to change the system in, in Syria, they bomb uh, Syria. 
And naturally, the, the result and the consequence of this policy that the migrants are coming, coming to Europe. It is their mistake. And uh, if you invite uh, more and more migrants to Europe, you cannot solve the main reasons. You should solve the reasons of this, of this crisis. You should go to Syria, you should go to, to Afghanistan, to other countries, to build factories, to give jobs to the people, and to, to, to help the governments uh, of these uh, countries, and to prevent a further development of a migration flow uh, to Europe. Uh, we are an oppositional party in, in Hungary. Nevertheless, we declared from the very, very first minute that uh, we support the line of Mr. Orban in this, in this question. Uh, he is the prime minister, he leads the government, it is their responsibility and it is their possibility to act. I can criticize the government, I can have good imagination, good plans, good ideas, but I'm, I'm not the prime minister. I don't have now the, the, the power, perhaps later, but not now. And I think that what they are doing and what Mr. Orban is doing is, is quite, quite uh, correct. We should save Hungary, we should defend the borders of Hungary, and at the same time we should save Europe and European civilization. We have in Hungary our experience, you know, that uh, a great part of the Hungarian population is the so-called Roma or Gypsy population. And, and we know uh, from centuries, and we have this experience, that it is very, very difficult to find a common language and a common way of coexistence, even between the, the Hungarian population and the, and, the, and the Gypsy population and not speaking about Syrians, Arabs, Afghans, and, and other populations. Regarding your position about this uh, immigration topic, um, it seems that you have a very different position than usual um, left-wing or radical left-wing parties in Western Europe. For example, the, the French Communist Party um, turned uh, in, the, in the 80s from a position uh, expressed by Mr. Georges Marché, who was leading the French Communist Party at this time, who was quite against immigration because he considered it was not in the interest of the French workers. Then suddenly, in the 80s, uh, there has been a change of policy on this um, topic, and then the line of the party became some kind of welcome to Migrants. How do you see this evolution of the left-wing and uh, radical left-wing parties in Western Europe that are absolutely um, supporters of uh, those massive uh, migrations? It's all these elements that we see now are the consequences of the social changes in the left movement of Western Europe and also, also Eastern Europe. In, uh, traditionally, in the 1960s, 70s, the majority of the members of the left parties belonged to the working class, to the working categories of the society. Then it changed. The middle classes and even rich people came uh, to the left parties. In Hungary, for example, a left uh, uh, foreign minister was Mr. Gyurcsány, a billionaire. Uh, you can understand that a billionaire cannot understand the real everyday problems of the, of the, the common Hungarian people. And it is the same in France, in Italy, in, in, in Austria. Um, and if you don't understand uh, uh, the real demands of the people, you will lose the contact with them and you will have a policy, a political line, which is unacceptable for these uh, categories. It is, uh, I think, the reason of the, of the loss of the, of the left parties in many countries of, of uh, Western Europe. I remember the French Communist Party, which really defended the interests of the, of the, of the population of France, of the, of the French workers. And when they went over to a liberal side, uh, they begin to lose uh, their uh, support. And I, say, I, think, I think that the same situation is, is uh, now in other countries in, in Europe. Uh, have a look at, at Austria. 
uh, it's not a, a secret that, uh, that uh, the majority of the workers in Austria voted during the last elections for the Freedom Party of Austria, not for the communist, which practically a liberal line. But for that party, we say that no, stop the migration. Let's uh, represent the interests of the of the working people of of Austria. What our party is concerned, we think that we are living here in Hungary. Uh, we should defend the interests of the of the Hungarian people. First of all, the interest of the Hungarian working people, workers, and other working uh, categories. And I think that it is the it is the 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 right political line which could lead to successes. And regarding those great differences between your line, which is not liberal, and the line of the many left-wing parties in Western Europe, do you still have some official contacts with the, um, with the Western European left-wing parties? You know that uh, there are a lot of political parties in Europe, even of left. Uh, type and uh, all political parties have their political families. In the European uh, Union there are communist parties, social democratic parties which can be characterized as uh, left parties. We have uh, good contacts with the, with the communist and working, pa working parties of uh, Europe. There are more than 30-40 parties of this type in Europe, in uh, the European Union, in the European Parliament, so some parties represented like the uh, Communist Party of the Czech Republic, which is, a, which is the third political force in, in the Czech Republic, the Communist Party of Portugal, you know that uh, as a result of the last elections in Portugal was that no government can be born without the support of the Portuguese Communist Party. It is for the first time in the Portuguese uh, history. It's quite a new uh, phenomenon. And we have good connection with the Communist Party of Greece, which really have a great importance and influence in the, in the political uh, life. And naturally with German and, and other parties. Earlier we had to we used to have better contacts with the Communist Party of French, but I think that now we don't speak the same language. And if you don't speak the same language, it's difficult to, to understand each other. Nowadays in um, Europe, uh, more and more citizens are um, supporting populist or right-wing or far-right-wing uh, organizations. And um, you, as a left-wing person, how would you see a possibility for a left-wing, radical left-wing party to challenge this evolution? You know, we are against uh, the liberal uh, explaining and liberal understanding of the, of the radical right uh, parties. You know that normally it is accepted to call these parties semi-fascist parties or or wholly fascist parties or extreme parties and so on. I think that uh, naturally there are parties of this type in, in Europe, but we should make a very clear difference. And first of all, we should understand the reasons why uh, the radical right movements can be stronger in, in Europe than, than earlier. And I think the reason that they could find a way how to express the interests of uh, the people, uh, including the workers, how, how to defend national interests, how to think uh, in categories which are more comfortable for the actual Europe than the, than the uh, political lines of the liberals, uh, uh, for example. And, um, I think that we should also understand that uh, Europe is changing and we need uh, uh, non-traditional solutions. You know, I imagine that the European Union is a house where we are living and I see that, uh, that the walls of this house are, are romping. It's, they are standing yet, but, but uh, 
I wouldn't live too long in, in this house, that we should find some, some other ways uh, to live. And if we want to find some other ways, it demands uh, non-traditional ways of, of, uh, of thinking, even in political political line. That's why we think that uh, we follow with interest what going on in the Western European political arena, what uh, even the right-wing political party says, and, uh, and uh, we try to understand uh, why a lot of people in France, for example, uh, support the party of uh, Marie Le Pen, or why a lot of people support, even a rising quantity of people support the party of freedom in, 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 in Austria. Uh, if uh, we take uh, uh, Hungary, we have also a uh, right-wing political or even radical right-wing political party which is represented in the Hungarian parliament. We think that uh, there are a lot of uh, similarities in the verbal expressions of our parties. We are against NATO, they are against NATO, we are against European Union, they are against the European Union, they are against capitalism, we are against capitalism. But I think that it's only the verbal surface of the political line. And uh, I think that uh, the so-called Jobbik party doesn't really want to change the Hungarian capitalist system. And our party does want it, because we are convinced that uh, there can be reforms in the capitalist systems, but for the majority of the working people we can create a real better life only if we change the roots of the existing system. And this is the difference, I think, between our parties.